Where is Malvolio? He is sad and civil, and suits well for a servant of my fortune. Where is Malvolio? He is coming, madam, but in a very strange manner. He is sure possessed, madam. Why? What's the matter? Does he rave? Oh, no, madam. He doth nothing but <laughs> smile. <laughs> and your ladyship were best to have some guard about him if he come. For sure the man is tainted in his wits. <laughs> I am as mad as he, as sad and merry mad as he call me. How now, Malvolio? Sweet lady, how how? <laughs> Smiley, so I sent thee upon a sad occasion. Sad lady, I could be sad. This doth make for some obstruction in the blood, this cross <laughs> But what of that? If it pleases the eye of one, then it is with me as the very true sonnet is. Please one, please all. Why, how doth thou, man? What is the matter with thee? Oh, not black in my mind, though yellow in my eyes, if it come to his hand, and command shall be executed. I think we know, sweet Roman hand. Mm. Well, thou go to bed now, will you? <laughs> 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 to bed, my sweetheart, and I will come to thee. Oh, comfort thee. How do you, Malvolio? At your request? Yes, nightingales answer doors. Why appear you with such ridiculous boldness before my lady? Be not afraid of greatness. Talk about greatness. What meanest thou by that, Malvolio? Well, that some are born great. Uh -huh. Some achieve greatness. Yes, what sayest thou? Some have greatness thrust upon them. <laughs> <laughs> Stop <laughs> that! Well, remember who commended thy yellow stocking. Thy yellow stockings. And they wish to see thee at the cross guard? Cross guarded. Go to, thou art maid, if thou desirest to be so. And my maid? If not, let me see thee a servant still. This is very midsummer madness. Good morrow, have this fellow looked to. Where is my cousin Toby? Let some of my people have special care of him, and I would not have him miscarry for the half of my dowry. <laughs> no worse a man than Sir Toby to look at me. This concurs directly with the letter. For she sends him on purpose that I may appear stubborn, or she incites me to that in this letter. He opposite with a kinsman says she's surly with servants. And when she went away now, let this fellow be looked to. Fellow! Not Malvolio, nor after my decree, but fellow. Why, like everything appears together. That no dram of a scruple, no scruple of a scruple, no incredulous or unsafe circumstance. What can be said? That nothing can come between me and the full prospects of my hopes. Well, Jove not I as the door of this, and he is to be thanked. Which way is he then under sanctity? If all the devils in hell be torn in little, and he and himself possessed him, yet I'll speak to him. Here he is, here he is. How is it with you, sir? How is it with you, man? Go off! I discard you. Let me enjoy my private. Go off! Lo, how heavy speaks the fiend within him. Did not I tell you, Sir Toby, my lady prays you have a care of him. Ah, does she so? Go to, go to peace. Peace, we must deal gently with him. Let me alone. How do you, Malvolio? How is it with you? What man? Defy the devil. Consider he's an enemy to mankind. Do you know what you say? Lo, and you speak ill of the devil, how he takes it at heart. Pray God he be not bewitched. Oh, carry his water to the wise woman. Marry? And it shall be done tomorrow morning, if I live. My lady would not lose him for more than I'll say. How now, mistress? Oh, Lord. Prithee, hold thy peace. This is not the way. Do you not see? You move him. Let me alone with him. Neighbour, gentleness, gently, gently. The fiend is rough will not be roughly used. How now, my moorcock? <laughs> how dost thou? Chuck! Sir! Get 
him to say his prayers. Good Sir Toby, get him to pray. My prayers, Minx. Nay, I warrant you, he'll not hear of godliness. Go hang yourself, all. You are idle, shallow things, and I am not of your element. You shall know more hereafter. <laughs> <laughs> This complaint upon a stage now, I will condemn it as an improbable fiction. My very genius has taken the infection of the device man. Nay, pursue him now, lest the device take air and taint. We will make him very mad indeed. <laughs> the house will be the quieter. <laughs> Come, we'll have him in a dark room and bound. My niece is already in the belief that he's mad, but we may carry it thus for our pleasure and his penance. Tell our very pastime, tired, out of breath, prompts us to have mercy on him. <laughs> let's see! Let's see! on side, his youthful hose, well saved, a world too wide for his shrunk shank, and his big manly voice, turning again towards childish treble, pipes and whistles in his sound. I was now a shareholder in the Globe Theatre and a prominent member of the, the King's Men, and wealthy enough to afford to buy a house in London, something which I gather in your days was a quite a problem. <laughs> <laughs> My new accommodation in Blackfriars was close to the new indoor theatre, which enabled my plays to be performed year round. Many of my later romances, including The Tempest, Winter's Tale, Cymbeline, and Pericles, were performed there. My last play was Henry VIII which concluded my history cycle. And at the end of that play, we saw the birth of Queen Elizabeth. Mine, not yours. <laughs> Ironically, it was during a production of Henry VIII that a spark from a, an ordinance set off during the action set light to the thatch of the Globe Theatre. And it burned to the ground in less than an hour. Only one person was hurt, a man whose breeches caught fire that uh, was put out with bottled ale. <laughs> Over the centuries, my plays have inspired actors, writers, and directors the world over. They have been vulgarized, bastardized, and, and beautified, but they still survive. Secretly, I quite enjoy it when people reinterpret my plays from the perspective of new passions. Which leads us on to our next piece, specially created for this evening. In it we see a production of Antony and Cleopatra being filmed in a TV studio. Antony and Cleopatra have been defeated by the forces of Octavius Caesar. Antony is dead. And rather than be taken by Octavius to Rome in chains, Cleopatra decides to commit suicide. 